Hi. So when I was around seven years, uh, somebody asked me that what I want to do. Without a single or a second thought, beaming with pride, I told that I want to be an artist. I still remember that defining silence and the expression on people, space that followed, which was beyond the comprehension of my little mind. But I knew that something was wrong about what I said. So my early memory of art was my umma going for art classes, for which I used to tag along. So I was a mere spectator. I, I literally waited outside her art class for two to three hours every Sundays until her art teacher told me to join for the class. I was clearly clueless. I didn't know what I was doing or, or for the fact what I was or why I was even there. So right after that, my parents started a very small scale art school at my home. So where all the kids in my neighborhood joined for art, music, uh, painting, drawing and you know, dance, everything. So that is when I finally stepped into the magnificent world of art. But to be frank, I was not clearly convinced or my heart was not fully into it. But my parents always gently nudged me to take or test new waters. So I was never born as an artist or artistic in hand. It was all pure dedication and hard work why I'm here. So fast forward to my 12th grade, again, that quintessential question was yet again asked, what do you want to do? So the adolescent in me was sure about one thing, that I want to wake up to zero missed calls and I want to be my own boss. But there was one thing that I was really sure and pretty sure about that I don't want mathematics anywhere near my life. I'm sorry guys, I hated mathematics like, you know, I am such a mess in mathematics. So that is when my father is the one who suggested architecture. So I quickly googled architecture syllabus and I found out that they had mathematics only for the first two semesters. Okay, I was safe. So I appeared for NATA exam. I got into MES School of Architecture, Kuchipuram in 2007. Of course, I was a very good student. I scored pretty good marks. Uh, passed out in 2012, I flew right away to Bangalore. I joined there and I worked for one or two years. And eventually I was kicked out of that office because for the earliest, I mean, the reasons I already mentioned that I want to be my own boss. So I never fitted in a place where they have a setup from nine to five. So I came back to Kerala. I did my master's in sustainable architecture. And finally I realized that architecture is not my cup of tea. So after all these bachelors and masters, <laughs> So and I did not want to pursue architecture as my main breadwinner. So the main surprising fact was that my parents never ever questioned my decision. So that kind of faith was always unbelievable. So the artist in me and the daughter in me is always and forever indebted. So I have always been a beach person, you know. And just before that, uh, after my course and I was kicked out from the office, I came back home and there is always this phase where we used to face significant you know, ups and downs. But for me, it was much more bigger than that. Boredom. I was bored with everything that I have been doing. I was bored with people. I was bored with you know, TV, music, everything. And that is when I started sketching. Sketching on every bits and pieces of paper. I bought my first sketchbook, second, third. And that is when my brother gifted me a graphic tablet. I spent literally seven to eight hours every day to make myself a better artist. And of course I was jobless because I was kicked out. So I have always been a beach person. So whenever, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about beach? It could be that serene nature or peace or calm. But for me, it was totally different. It was all about people and crowd. I was always fascinated by the, by the crowd and people. I, I, it, it indeed gave me an adrenaline rush. So I have always been a people person and I love people watching. In Malayalam, we will say Vayamata. I love doing that. So whenever I went to beach, I find a cozy spot. I'll sit there, I'll take my sketchbook, I'll start sketching. So my sketches were completely or fully filled with intricate facial expressions of people, their saris, their beautiful prints, and kids crying for ice cream, the kites, balloon, everything. So I was always in search of people and crowd and that made me travel a lot around the globe. And during one of the trips to Goa, I happened to visit Arpura Flea Market. So it's a Saturday night market. So the moment I stepped in, I understood or I asked myself, why is this not happening in Koikot? See, I am a proud Koikotakari and you know, I love being here and I love all the Koikotaka. Because we are amazing. You know, we, are, we love food, we love music, we love literature, we love cinema. And we have great talents here. We have great businesses here. So I didn't wait someone else to do it. So I only did, I only curated a flea market. 
So one fine morning, I woke up and I told my husband, see, Fazal, I am going to do a flea market. He's like, really? Okay, then let's do it. So me and four of my friends, five of us, curated a flea market, the first ever in Calicut in 2018. So people ask me, Sherry, what do you really expect out of it? Do you even expect some kind of footfall? So I told, yeah, I think around, this is quite good. So around 1,500 people would be coming in and the results overwhelmed us. So after the first, for the first edition, we had a footfall of more than 35,000 people and it was a massive hit. And what made me even more happy was that right after it, we could literally see the flea markets popping out everywhere, especially in the northern Kerala. Kasargod, Payanur, Talasheri, Kannur, Tirur, Kotagal, Malapuram, Koikot, Farooq. So it was amazing. So we all have this notion that art is only painting and drawing. It's not that. Art is everything. Art is in music, poetry, literature, cinema. So that's literally what I wanted to do. So once you come to the flea market, I wanted you to, you know, uh, do whatever you want. If you are a shopper, you have shops. If you are a foodie, then you have food. If you are into music, then you have music. So art is indeed limitless. And that is the idea I wanted to propagate with the flea market. And that's what exactly I did. So these are some of the images of our first three editions. So going back to my beach days, I still remember my mom would say, Mole, please don't go to the other side of the beach because it's not safe for women, especially, and children. So I was completely born and brought up here and I thought to myself, see, I'm the city and you're telling me that there is another side of space that, or place that is not safe for women. And I truly believe a city is only developed only when, uh, when children and women feel safer and can um, ro freely roam around at night without fear engulfing them. So that is when, only when the a city is developed. So my mom and other, everyone kept on talking about the south side of the beach. So I never even tried because people kept telling me that that place is dimly lit lane and it's, it was always under investigation for the notorious or criminal acts. So I never went there. But I was always confused. Why? What, how can we change it? So what can we do for it? And, and over the years, I, I got to know that art is the answer because art is something that can change anything, you know. Art will make people, you know, wind together, connect together, no matter what you are, where you are from, what is your religion, what is your gender, nothing matters there. Art connects all of us. So that is when I got to know about Start India. So they are a not-for-profit organization who creates art projects in public and urban spaces. So their main aim is to create art accessible to a wider audience beyond the conventional art museums and galleries. So I used to send them messages on Instagram. See, why don't you come to Koikot? See, I'm an artist, we have artist friends, but they didn't reply. <laughs> but one fine day, I woke up to one of their campaign exclusively for Kerala, which is Donate a Wall. So I knew it, this is it, let's do it. So me and few of our friends, all of us suggested Kopra Bazaar Wall. So Kopra Bazaar is uh, a series of a go down or a building which is around 1, 110 years old. So they have n number of active coconut trading happening even now. So if you go there in the evening, you can see all the Chetamar sitting on the footpath and segregating coconuts and transporting. A lot of business is happening there. So we suggested that building. A team from starting there came down. They loved the place. And then they curated, they curated a beautiful wall, wall art or wall mural for that. So this was the plain boring wall, I would definitely say. So now this is what it is. So, trespassers, a 10-member group, uh, they are basically Malayalis, they came down to Calicut, stayed here for a few weeks, and they did an amazing job. So, the whole work was about the unsung heroes who worked behind the coconut industry, who are really the major role in that economy. So, celebrating that kind of labor. So, I swell with pride. If you go there now, you can see a lot of people taking selfies. Nobody noticed that building, you know. Everyone would ju just pass by. But right now, People would stop there for a second. They'll read the whole story from this end to that end. And it's one of the beautiful landmarks in Calicut. And what makes me even more prouder is that these Chetamar would say, this is us. This is our life. And this is what our story is. So art is not only changes lives, but also places and emotions of people that's revolving around it. So then... Uh, yeah, then coming to my art, we had those bigger plans after that, but that is when that uninvited guest, COVID, again crashed landed into all our lives. 
So again, going back to my boredom phase, I was at home doing nothing. And that is when one morning I was getting rave reviews and, you know, my inbox, inbox was flooded with messages. So it was about one of the artworks I did. So it was this. So the first one is actually Johanna Vemi's uh, Girl with a Pearl Earring. So I picturized it into Patume Dade. So I didn't even know that it was known as art parody. So art parody is something, it's, it's a creative work of art in an exaggerated comedic fashion. So people were so amazed and I was getting, you know, so what are you going to do next? So what I did was, I took, I didn't want my characters to travel to the other side of the world. So I took everyone here. So, so this is Salvador Dali and uh, Frida Kahlo on the Chemin poster. So this is Philomena as Mona Lisa and Kalpana as Frida Kahlo. And this is a friend's cast as a fishering community in Kerala. So this is Rihanna and Bruno Mars being the Muslim wedding couple. So this is the Monica, Rachel and Phoebe being Kalpana, Philomena and Sugumari. And this is, oh my God, I love this. <laughs> this is Bob Mali and John Lennon enjoying a Suleimani. So this is Billy Eilish and Ravi Verma, and I took some of a few evergreen actors to the other side into the Friends cast. And this is me and Frida, Frida Kahlo just casually chilling because, you know, I can be anywhere, guys. <laughs> that is the power of art. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, see, I, I'm so happy being here. That is the another thing. Uh, so right now, after all this, I started my Instagram profile. It's been going very well. And also, I work for Lamborghini right now. I have been the illustrator for the last year and I have been doing illustrations for the high profile clients and I'm so excited to tell you guys that I have done illustrations for Ranveer Singh and Karthik Aryan. So <laughs> I surely I cannot publicize or post the photos because the contract has been signed. So it is always safe in my heart, especially in my iPad. Yeah. So uh, with a raise of your hands, I would like to know how many of you are artists here? I can't see it. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, Noor Jalila. Yeah. So basically, there are people, you know, a lot of us who, are, who still hesitate to take art as a career. Uh, reasons could be many. Even in my past, there were several situations I, I was really doubtful that if this is the right thing or I'm, that I'm doing. But what kept me going was that real and strong and true passion for art, that of creating that kind of art. So, in fact, I am a testimonial for you guys <laughs> that if you... Truly follow a passion, it will steer towards success and personal gratification. So over the years, I, you know, I, I met a lot of artists, I met a lot of people, and I found that there are still artists who are not technologically inclined or who are not really properly using the digital space to commercialize their talents. Or there are even artists who are not, uh, who are not getting a chance to exhibit their artworks. And there are even artists who did not have a space you know, or uh, to work on the canvases. So I realized that I wanted to be that change or I wanted to be that pebble that, that creates the ripples for the change. And I, it's finally time to give back to my clan. So I'm really excited to talk about my latest initiative called the Longhouse Collective. It's been funded and supported by uh, Samakata Foundation. So basically, we are creating an art hub in Koikod where all of us, all the creative minds and you know, like-minded people can come sit together, share their ideas. So basically, we will have a physical uh, art gallery space for the art exhibitions, then a public art studio where artists can come and work on their canvases peacefully. So if you ask me what is the dream, my dream is not really that far away because I think when we step out of our homes, imagine a street where a lot of artists are doing live portrait or caricature, kids enjoying to the music that's been played by the street musicians and food, katanchaya, chaya, parapoda, parampari, all of us having that. And I'm pretty much sure that dream is not really far away. So uh, because I, Sharon Khadija, an architect by profession and artist by passion, and a wanderlust at heart is ready to do anything and everything to reach there. So dream, believe and achieve, that is the mantra. Thank you so much, guys.